Hello, everyone. Good afternoon again. My name is Andrew Creel, an assistant director for admission at the College of Mount St. Vincent. If you have been with us all day, you already know we have been doing a Meet Your Major webinar series with different faculty, different students, including panels and things like that. It's been a great event. And now we're on to our next Meet Your Major webinar with Dr. Kristen Lawler, uh, the chair and associate professor of sociology. She's going to talk uh, about the sociology department and answer any questions you guys may have. Dr. Lawler. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks very much. And hi, everybody. Nice to see you. Although I have to say, I don't know who's here and I don't know who's watching. Uh, my sense of what this was going to be was sort of a Zoom call with a whole bunch of people together. So um, so uh, I apologize for that. I thought we'd be like talking um, a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, conversationally. But um, let me, so I don't know who you are, I can't see you, but whoever is out there and interested in the sociology department at College of Mount St. Vincent, hello and welcome. Um, I know that this must be a very odd time in many ways to be thinking about even something like what you wanna major in um, and even broader than that, uh, where you wanna to go to school, what will happen at the place um, that you have decided to go to school. So much is uncertain these days. Um, and that's why I only wanna say a couple of things about the sociology department, some of the opportunities that we offer and kind of what we teach you in the department. And then assuming that there's some folks out there, I, I would like to take some questions from parents and from students, um, because I know there's just a lot of questions and concerns out there um, about what's coming. Um, so, in the sociology department, you know, sociology, broadly speaking, is the study of the way that the social landscape, culture, politics, the economy, things like class, race, gender, sexual orientation, age, nationality, immigration status, these sort of broad, um, what we call variables, things that vary, um, and that are aspects of the social landscape what sort of surrounds you, the texture of the society, the, the big institutions and the big conflicts that make up the, the world that's bigger than just the individual. What sociology studies is the way that all of that impacts individual life and the way in which, conversely, individuals and people in groups reciprocally impact that broader society. Um, that's really what sociology is, and you can probably tell from that description, it's a very big tent. So you'll see all kinds of classes that we offer in the sociology department. We've got uh, classes on um, crime and the criminal justice system. We've got classes on race and ethnicity, classes on uh, social class, economic class, globalization and inequality, schools and society, the family, um, public policy. When you're talking about society, society is a big tent and, and the study of society involves a, a really broad range of different things. Um, but there are certain basics that you learn as a sociology major, I'm gonna talk about them. And then there are certain more um, specialized things that you might be interested in if you're interested in studying sociology. Um, the basics that we offer you are really learning how to think, how to do research, how to write well, and how to speak effectively. Now, these are all skills that have, uh, in my opinion, have never been more important to develop. Um, there will be a lot of people out there who will tell you that um, you need to really specialize and do something very uh, explicitly job related right now. And that is so understandable, of course. I mean, we're looking at unemployment rates, the possibility of unemployment rates we have not seen um, since the Great Depression. We're looking at a very, I don't need to tell anybody out there, much less young people, uh, what you're facing in terms of the job market. Um, but to me, given all of that uncertainty, it has never been more important to develop skills that transcend whatever job you do, that make you smart and capable no matter what opportunities arise. If you are someone who can write, who can think, 
who can do research systematically, which means identifying questions that are important and, and figuring out systematically and methodically how to answer those questions, how to present the data in a way that people can understand and then solve problems on the basis of. If you're that person, if you're the person who can speak effectively in public, if you are somebody who is the smartest person in the room, you're going to do well, no matter what the particular job opportunities are that come your way. Now, this is not true if you're training to be uh, a nurse or an engineer or something like that. I'm not saying there aren't specialized job trainings, but in sociology, we teach skills that often are considered um, not necessarily related to employment. Uh, they're sort of just really interesting. I mean, thinking about the history of popular culture in the United States or thinking about the um, history of immigration and racial difference, thinking about how society works is sort of inherently fascinating. And it is that. But it's also, I really want to assure you that as much as we love sociology in the department because it's interesting, and because the unexamined life is not worth living, and because being able to think about the world is a very important part of having a good life. All of that is true, but also the research skills and the, the particular skills that we teach in the department are things that are not only inherently good things, but are also things that will actually help you such that your education in sociology is a real material investment in your future. And not just in the future of having a good life, and, uh, but your actual you know, employment and earnings and stuff like that. So we take that stuff seriously, um, even though sociology is also so inherently fascinating. I'm biased, of course. I was a sociology major in college. Um, and I am obviously a sociology professor now, so I've, I've been a fan for a long time. Um, in terms of how we teach you these things, uh, you know, the, the basics are to complete a sociology major, you teach, uh, you teach, you take 10 sociology classes, not counting anything you might take towards the college core requirements, which you've probably already heard about. Uh, if not, feel free to, I'm going to put my email address in the chat, um, uh, or Andrew, if you want to do that on the Facebook page, just pop my email address in there. Anybody who has questions, feel free to, to reach out to me. I'll be happy to, uh, you know, have a little Zoom with you or, or email back and forth uh, or whatever. So, um, but there's, um, you know, for the major itself, 10 courses in sociology, four of them are required classes, okay? Uh, one of the requirements is a social theory class. Um, so that's uh, the required class that I teach, and it's really very much about sharp, complex thinking about the big picture patterns of society. Um, and uh, it is a very, it's a lot of writing, a lot of reading, a lot of thinking. Um, about the big picture. And well, we read the classics of social theory. Um, so it's also really good at helping you become a very sharp reader and decoder of texts, which is incredibly important. Uh, these days we do a lot of sort of visual stuff too. It's, I mean, again, I'm biased, but I think it's a great class. But all, our, all of our classes are great in sociology, I can honestly tell you. And around the mount, um, just as a little aside, um, after my presentation, I'm going to take questions about sort of what are we going to do? How are we going to social distance and stuff like that? Um, but you should know the education that students get at College of Mount St. Vincent is rock solid. Um, I've been here for 13 years um, and it is I, I've watched it year after year. It is a transformative and absolutely like old fashioned, really good education. By the time you get out, you really know some things and you really know um, you, you have a great education and that is not going to change 
um, no matter what kinds of accommodations we have to make in terms of social distancing or hybrid classes or whatever. So everything I say about sociology in terms of um, critical thinking, writing, analysis, all that kind of stuff is actually really true of a lot of what you'll do at Mount St. Vincent in all kinds of other classes, philosophies like this, histories like this, English, psychology, everything, communications, it's all great. Um, so, uh, but, you know, we focus particularly on the relationship between the broad social landscape and uh, it, that's impact on uh, the individual largely. And the skills are focused on research, really. Um, so, in addition to the social theory class, which is sort of big picture thinking, writing, and analysis, um, broad historical trends about the rise and fall of societies and stuff, really good stuff. Um, uh, we have two requirements, two of the four requirements are research classes. One is qualitative research, which involves interviewing people, participant observation, which is sort of hanging out with people and writing the stories. Um, uh, that's uh, ethnographic research, that's qualitative research. Um, you'll take one class in kind of how to do that. You'll take another class in quantitative research, which is survey research methods, uh, statistical data analysis, pretty rudimentary statistical data analysis, but good enough um, that if you, it gives you a solid um, foundation if you want to go on to grad school for something like that uh, and it also gives you sort of enough to crunch numbers and do data analysis and do quantitative research uh, in any kind of job uh, that you want to do. The fourth class is your senior seminar and we're really really proud of um, what comes out of our seniors every year. Every senior does, every graduate of the sociology department does a senior thesis, um, a piece of original research, some of it qualitative research, some people do quantitative research, some people do theory, uh, I was gonna say dissertations, it's not a dissertation, but it's a thesis. Um, you know, you sort of pick what's been most compelling to you in your time at the department, and, uh, and you, take it the next step and you research further. Um, and it's one of these things where it's so wonderful to have that kind of accomplishment. In the beginning of the process, students are always like, 25 pages, how could I ever, I, I, that's, I've never done anything, you know, 30 pages long with all of this original research. And, and by the end, students feel, and the kind of pride in real accomplishment that is something that nobody can ever take away from you. And you always have it. And it's a powerful, it's an extraordinarily wonderful thing. Um, I am deeply proud of the theses that come out of our department. Um, and I know our students are very, very proud of the work that they do too. So there are the four required classes. The rest you take sort of in either general sociology. So maybe you mix around. That's what I did. I took some sociology of education and some sociology of the family. I focused a lot on social class and race, which is still the stuff that I look most at. That's my own work. Um, uh, gender stuff. But um, but that's what I did and that's what I think is a great um, model to sort of do general sociology. We've also got a couple of other concentrations in the department. So folks concentrate in social service if they think that they might wanna go on to uh, a career in social work. We've got a good beginning foundation for that. Um, and there's also a five year program that sort of eases you into not eases you into, but um, prepares you to for an accelerated um, five-year bachelor's and master's degree in social work. Um, and the MSW is a degree that you can take to the bank. That is uh, one of the best master's degrees that you can get, and I want to talk about that program in a minute. Um, but lots of our students just sort of concentrate in social service um, as sociology majors, and when they graduate, get out and do and work in community organizations and stuff like that, um, and and all kinds of uh, organizations, city government, all kinds of stuff. Uh, we also have a concentration in criminology and justice, um, which is really central to sociology. Um, part of the big picture of society is rules. Um, and so the breaking of rules is a big part of what uh, sociologists study uh, as well, whether it's in the form of um, 
social movements, um, uh, urban uprisings, like some of the things that we're seeing in Minneapolis, um, to, you know, today, uh, or whether it's in the form of crime or subcultural deviance, just people doing odd things with the way they dress and stuff like that, um, but things that make sense from inside the subculture. Um, so crime and deviance is a, is a big part of what uh, sociology looks at uh, as well. And uh, we also have a um, linked um, BA and master's degree uh, program in criminology and justice for folks who are interested specifically in the crime aspect of that and, and being involved in um, criminology uh, and the, in the criminal justice system in one way or another. We've got another, um, what was a concentration and is now a minor that comes out of the department, which is uh, urban studies. And uh, for those who are interested uh, in the urban studies minor, I'd be happy to talk to you guys a little bit about that, but it's good um, planning for, and it's mostly sociology classes, urban sociology classes that are in that minor. Um, and if the city interests you and history and planning and structure of the city, um, if urban life is something that is of interest to you, um, if the future of cities uh, and the future of urban planning is something that's interesting to you, um, urban studies might be for you. Uh, so those are the concentrations. The last thing I just want to talk quickly about is just what I referred to briefly uh, are the five-year um, BA and master's degree programs. Um, the, we have had for several years a five-year program with Fordham University uh, where students would do three years uh, at the Mount, finish all their requirements, and then go on right away to Fordham to do their two years of master's work. And the fourth year kind of double counts as um, both Mount St. Vincent undergraduate credits to finish your undergraduate degree and as Fordham master's degree credits to get that MSW at Fordham. Um, and we, that's always been a relatively small program, but um, folks have had a very good experience. Fordham is absolutely wonderful. Um, and like I said, the MSW, the master in social work is a really wonderful degree. Um, I and a very just useful and important uh, degree. Um, we have a new partnership with Yeshiva University's Wurzweiler School of Social Work, which is a similar um, program, but it actually has some benefits for our students um, that the earlier program which people uh, will still be allowed to be part of if they want to, but this new program with Yeshiva University, which has a you know nationally renowned, as well, just like Fordham, nationally renowned uh, graduate program in social work, um, has some uh, financial benefits for students um, and some even just everyday life benefits for students that uh, I think make it um, potentially preferable to the other one. And then I'm very, very excited about being able to offer this opportunity. As I mentioned, with St. John's University, there is, uh, they offer a master's degree in criminology and justice. Um, and if you move into that program through the sociology department at the Mount, um, the way that it works is um, you, you, know, you do your whole four years uh, at the Mount, but in your junior and senior year, one class per semester, you take at St. John's. Um, so then you're halfway to a master's degree by the time you get your bachelor's from the Mount. And then you go on for that fifth year and you do your um, full master's in, in criminology at St. John's. So we're, we find those um, opportunities really um, exciting for students. Um, but also just to sort of wrap up and bring it back around, we take very seriously um, the importance of an undergraduate education and of preparing you for what you're going to need to know how to do um, uh, going out into the, um, into the job market with a four-year undergraduate degree. Like graduate school is very important. It's absolutely wonderful. It's great. I went to grad school, <laughs> like it's good. Um, but also uh, we have these opportunities, but we also, we, like I said, we really teach you things in the sociology department that are very, very important. I argue, and I've also seen it um, to be true, are 
very important skills um, in what we call the real world, even though, of course, when you're in college, you're still living in the real world. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and those skills are really, you know, decoding texts, public speaking, writing, and, and what is most sort of typical of sociology and what makes it different from writing or history, English, history, philosophy, something like that is obviously the texts are different. Um, but every department teaches you that stuff, sort of how to read, how to write, how to speak, how to think in, in different ways, in different departments. So you sort of pick what you like the best. Um, but what sociology teaches you and what we really are incredibly rigorous about is the research process. Um, and as I said, I think no matter what job you go on to do, the ability to do, to think, sharply about what kinds of questions are like if you're the person in the meeting who can identify what the problem that maybe there's some broad organizational problem and no one can quite put their finger on it but you can see the big picture and you can think about what's happening and you can say i think in order to solve this problem this is the question that we're going to need to answer and if you can identify that question, identify a systematic methodology with which to answer that question, and then be able to present the results, um, that benefits you, that, that you will do well in whatever occupational context um, you're in. Again, not whatever. That's not going to help you if you're a brain surgeon that long. <laughs> Maybe somewhat, but you know what I mean. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff in um, public policy and public service and uh, uh, nonprofit organizations and educational institutions. It's a big world out there. Again, we don't know what's coming in terms of unemployment. Um, and anyone who tells you that they're selling you a sure deal is not telling you the truth. Um, but what we focus on is what we've always focused on, which are the skills that make you sharp and effective and stand out no matter what you go on to do. And to me, that's where real security comes from, um, not from training for something particular because we just don't know what's coming. But what we do know is that um, these kind of skills um, pay off and they always have paid off. Um, so I'm gonna leave it at that for now. Um, and. Uh, and I just wanted to um, let you know if you have any questions, I'll be happy to take any questions. If there aren't questions now, like I know um, Andrew says people might be um, watching this later or something like that. So again, please feel free to reach out to me, students and also parents. If there are parents out there, I am a parent of a college age child. Um, I know how it feels to be a parent of a college age child, and I also know how it feels this particular summer to be a parent of a college age child. Um, and I have a lot of questions, and I know you have a lot of questions, and I am more than happy um, to. So please, please feel free to reach out to me. And that's true when you become a student of College of Mount St. Vincent as well. You should also know in the college as a whole, but we also really pride ourselves on this in the sociology department open doors, available faculty. Um, we love hanging out with young people. We love helping you develop into everything that you can be. And we are not standoffish professors. Um, we are um, very much available uh, to, um, to help you. I think I did just say be all you can be. I know that's kind of corny, but I mean it. So whatever, I'm sticking with it. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Perfect. Thank you for that, Dr. Lawler. That was an awesome uh, inside look at the sociology department from, from your perspective. And you have tons of experience uh, within the sociology department. And I think our students, I know our students are going to appreciate all this information as, along with their parents. Um, we, we do have a couple questions that I'd like to just get started with. And if, you, and if you have a question, whether you're here in the webinar or on Facebook or on Instagram, drop them in the comments and I'll be able to get them and filter them through to uh, Dr. Lawler. So with that, uh, all of our students, you know, they're home now. Hopefully we're back on campus, right? We're planning for that. If you could talk about a typical fresh first, first semester freshman year for a sociology major, mm -hmm. how would that look, look for them? Okay. Um, a typical first semester would most likely involve, um, you know, because in the beginning, what you want to do is um, start to move towards 
completion of the core requirements for the college. So you're gonna take your first writing class. You're probably gonna take your first um, uh, required language class because you may as well, you just were taking language in high school. So because there's a language requirement at the Mount, you may as well just keep on going with that. Um, uh, you will take what's called FYE, which I'm very excited. It means freshman year experience. And I've never taught FYE before, but I'm teaching FYE this fall. Um, and, uh, and that stuff about, um, I mean, from what I understand so far, uh, sort of, you know, this basic, basic skills that you need to become a college student. We don't assume that you come in knowing how to roll as a college student. Um, you, there's some training and some orientation that goes towards that. So how to use the library databases, how to do research, um, you know, all kinds of stuff about um, and my students often call it like adulting. Um, so it's like the colleging version of adulting. That's what um, FYE is. So you'll take your FYE class. Um, you will move towards some other core requirements, but definitely we encourage you to take at least one sociology course. Do your um, core sociology course as early as you can if you want to be a sociology major. Um, because for a couple of reasons, because first you can get a sense of the discipline. And if it's not, if you're taking a sociology class and then you take a, a history class and you're like, no, that, that's what I really love that you kind of want to know that as soon as possible. Um, but also if you're like, no sociology, this is for me, this is what I really want. You really can dive in. The other thing that we really that's important to us is that you get in one of our classes very quickly right away um, so that we can get to know you. Like I said, I, you know, it, we really, a big part of what makes the Mount special is that is just the quality of the education, but also the commitment of the faculty to teach not only in class, but through our relationships with students. Um, I know all of my students very well. And because of, you know, by the time they get through the program. And because of that, if an interesting, uh, you know, internship sort of comes across my radar screen or an interesting opportunity, or it's just the more I know you, the more I can help you. And that goes for all um, sociology faculty. So we really want um, sociology majors, not because you need to, to finish the, you know, major, you can finish the major in two years, but we want to get you in there as soon as possible so that we can really get to know you. Um, and, uh, and you know, get to get a sense of what kind of course of study is going to be best for you. What kinds of internships? What kinds of jobs? What kinds of even on-campus opportunities might be um, might be useful for you? So that's what I would say. Just do your listen to your FYE advisor, which maybe it'll be me if you're in my FYE class. <laughs> Never know. But if you're a social major, it might be. Um, but you'll have an FYE advisor who will advise you on what classes you should take. If, however, you're interested in one of the five-year programs that I described, come and see me. I'm the chair of the department. Come and see me right away. Um, and we'll talk about it and we'll put you on a track and you'll still have your advisor, but I'll be also advising you, um, at, you know, sort of about moving into this program, so. Perfect, thank you, Dr. Lawler, for that. Uh, we'll, we'll end it, uh, I have one question before we end it about your, your passion for teaching students and being a mentor for them. but. Okay. If you could talk about your class structure, is it more lecture-based, practical? What, what do assignments look like, tests? Because obviously it's going to be a big transition for high school students coming from different places. How do those tests, lectures, classes look like for, for, for incoming freshmen at, in the sociology department? Well, you know, there are a lot of things in the world that are very standardized. So I could, and there are certain, uh, disciplines that are very standardized for reasons that have to do with particular outcomes um, that need to be met. In the sociology department, much of what is expected of you will depend on the professor that you are taking your class with because that makes the world more interesting for one thing, but also be, like you don't want everything to just be the same for four years. Uh, 
but also because when you get out in the world, there's going to be a whole lot of different kinds of expectations of you. And you have to be able to be flexible to decode what someone's asking of you and to figure out how to meet those expectations. And if all you encounter is uniformity and standardization and expectations, you're not going to develop that kind of flexibility, which I consider to be really, really, really key. Having said that, you can expect to be reading a lot, right? You're moving from being in school from eight to three or whatever. I mean, by the time you're senior, that shrinks, right? But still, going to school all day long to um, not going to school all day long, and it's a big transition, and it's quite difficult because you actually have to learn to manage your own time. But the amount of work that you have to do in college is at least as much as what you had to do sitting in class from eight to three, five days a week. But now it's on you to do it when uh, it needs to get done and to do it in such a way that you're not procrastinating, that you're managing your time properly. So that's part of what FYE helps with. That's part of what we have all kinds of resources at the college to help students with time management and stuff like that. But you can expect, especially in my classes, but I would say this is pretty typical. Um, now, I generally teach upper level classes too. So there's a lot of reading, there's a lot of writing. Um, and uh, you might be able to tell I'm not shy to like talk. So there's good, there, I give lectures um, and class discussions. That's really how my classes look, lecture and discussion. Um, but in a more introductory level class, it's a little lighter on the reading, a little lighter on the writing, a little lighter on the lecture and a little heavier on the discussion. So you ease into, I mean, it really is a, a sort of a, uh, you progress through these stages until you get to the senior seminar where not only have you figured out how to manage your time yourself, not only have you figured out how to do all of this work, you know, uh, even though somebody's not staying on top of you every minute, like, have you done this today? Have you done that today? You have your own calendar, you're mapping it out. Not only are you meeting the expectations of your professors, but you are, the senior seminar is a transition into a professional life. It's a transition into being a different kind of uh, person in a way, because you're doing your own research. You come into my senior seminar students who started out as like, oh, what's going on in sociology 101 are in, or the core sociology class wind up being, by the time I, um, I supervise the senior seminar, I'm the one learning and the students are the experts in what they are researching and they come and tell me and I give them feedback on how to you know, do it a certain kind of a way. But as far as the content, they're the experts. So, so there's a real transition. You can expect things to be um, you know, uh, not impossible when you get here, um, but definitely a challenge. You should expect a challenge. If it's not a challenge, you might not be, you know, like you wouldn't want to go, you don't want to start something as big as this and have it not be challenging in some way. Um, but what's one of the things that's really special about the Mount and the faculty and staff at the Mount is that, and the whole institution, there is a major support system under you, not under you, but like around you um, to cultivate success. I mean, that's what, we're not like, yeah, it's hard, do it, do, you know, sink or swim. We're like, okay, this is serious work. You're embarking on something very, very serious. And our entire institution is set up to help you succeed in doing this. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Dr. Waller. And I think a great way to end um, this live webinar is with one question that I've been asking all of the professors. Um, because they have such a long tenure at Mount St. Vincent. And I'm not sure if you mentioned it in the beginning, but how long have you been at Mount St. Vincent? I've been here uh, 12 or 13 years, I, one or the other. I think maybe 12, I can't remember exactly. <laughs> it, was right, uh, it was right at the last um, cataclysm of the world, like the Great Recession, I started okay. with that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, awesome. So within those 12 to 13 years, um, I think it's important, and you hit on it so many times th throughout this webinar, 
the connection and the personability of professors at Mount St. Vincent and the connection that we that you guys have with students is something that is uncomparable, right? Excuse me, sorry about that. Okay. That's part of it. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, and I think it, it's uncomparable to other colleges and what, and what they offer, right? And yep. what I wanted to ask was, if you have one student experience that you could think about that you were just like, wow, this is why I do what I do. Because obviously you are a teacher, you are an educator, you are a mentor, but has there been one experience that you've had at the Mount with a student or a course or a class that has just been like the aha moment for you in terms of like, wow, like this is why I do what I do type of thing. You know, I can, I'm not sure I can identify just one, yeah. uh, but that is why I love my job. Those moments are why I love my job. Uh, one thing that does come into my mind is um, a student, an alum from a couple of years ago who came back to see me in the fall. And uh, just a lovely girl um, and was a very solid, very strong student, very quiet in class. Yep. Um, not really, um, you know, but very conscientious, solid, solid student, but not somebody who sort of like jumped out, not somebody who, um, you know, all the students come to see me, but there are some who are like in my office all the time or whatever. Um, and she came back and this actually happens quite a bit where there are students who will say, when we had that conversation, it really changed the way that I thought about, or what I learned, in this particular case, it was what I learned in the class on the family has helped me, oh, because this was actually a student who was an education program person, and she is a teacher now and has been for several years. She said, what I learned in that class I took with you on the family changes changed everything and i use it all the time and i go back to those readings so stuff like that when i get letters from students saying you know that thing we did in class or that conversation that we had or uh, something like that really because sometimes it's very obvious the impact that you're having on students and sometimes you're planting seeds that actually blossom later um, and so that's incredibly um, gratifying. I've seen students go on to, um, you know, I've given students sort of mentoring and advice and putting together nonprofit organizations and they've started their own organizations like while they were seniors that have gone on to be sort of, you know, uh, things in the world uh, that are real and that are successful. Um, I, I'm not sure I can think of one that is sort of stands out more than all of them, but that does happen quite a bit. Um, and it's part of what makes me know that we're really doing something right at the Mount. Um, and it is absolutely true that not everywhere, you know, there will be places that will offer something that seems more efficient, right? Um, but education is a, and higher education is a very complicated thing. Um, and some of the basics are not going to change and don't change. And those basic things about sort of uh, a relationship with a professor, a relationship with somebody who sort of shows you, who opens up, you know, a, a sort of a different, um, Sorry, uh, this is such a like Zoom thing. There's someone out on my street like screaming their head off. I hope people can't hear that. <laughs> um, you know, this is the world today, what are you gonna do? Um, anyway, uh, that's stuff that like, there's a lot of gimmicks out there in the world and there are like, get ready for the river of gimmick to come flowing and everybody's gonna be like, try this, look at this, brand new, disrupt, everything's different. But actually we do things the old fashioned way. It works amazingly well. Even if we have to do it online a little bit here and there to get us through some crisis stuff, um, we will do that, but the fundamental model does not change, and it doesn't change because it works really, really, really well. Um, yeah, so Mount St. Vincent is, I, you know, obviously, I, like I said, I've said a number of times I'm biased, um, 
but it is a deeply wonderful place. Um, it is a very warm and supportive and also rigorous and challenging place where our priority is um, education and opportunity for students. I mean, really, really, that's what we like. That's what we're all about. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Dr. Lawler. Uh, we have one more question. Uh, okay. If you were to give one piece of advice to our incoming class that are sociology majors, or, or maybe even undecided and maybe want to, you know, go into sociology, what, what would that one piece of advice be for them? I'm going to be corny again. I can't help it. Uh, we, none of us know what's coming. Now more than ever, if anyone tells you, you should do A and it will definitely lead to B and it will definitely lead to C and it will definitely lead to D, like don't believe them because that's not true. No one knows what's happening. No one knows what we are um, facing. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty in the world right now for tons of reasons, like the pandemic and other reasons as well, things that are just going to be coming to a head um, soon. If you, it's corny, I can't help it. If you follow what interests you, what engages you, um, what kind of turns you on and you think is like, and really uh, uh, makes you think and makes you feel alive, if you stay close to that and you always, always show up and put in your maximum effort, you, you will do well you will do okay and you will be where you are supposed to be. Um, you will, you'll be all right. We're all going to be all right. Um, but that's the advice that I would give. Always put in your maximum effort, even when you don't feel like it. Always show up, even if you don't feel like it. Do the reading, even if you're just running your eyes over it and you're tired and you've been working. Trust the process. Do your professors know what they're doing? do what they're telling you to do. Um, but also, if you want to really shine, if you want to be brilliant, if you want to be extraordinary at something, something that you choose because you think it will get you something else or because you think it's the safe choice or because you're not you're not necessarily gonna be brilliant at it. So you have to balance out practicality, of course. I would never advise people not to be practical, especially now. But you always want to stay close to what really excites you. So whether it's sociology or maybe you take a philosophy class and you're like, ah, oh, this is who I am, this is what I love, and everyone will say, you can't be a philosopher. That's insane. You can't possibly, but you know, so do some other, you can hedge your bets in all kinds of ways, but stay with that. Whatever it is that really excites you, that makes you feel alive, that makes you want to think there is power and brilliance and success in that. Um, not to be such like a corny self-help book, but I believe that that's the best advice I could give you. 100%. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Lola. I think that's great advice. I know that's great advice for our incoming students and their families as well. Uh, everything's just so up in the air, but as long as you put in the work and you know you do what makes you happy and you're passionate about, um, you, you're, you're going to be good in life. And I, I thank you so much for your time and uh, doing this and helping our students. Um, obviously, this is, gonna, this is live on Facebook and on Instagram and on the webinar here, but it will also live on our website under the Acceptance Student tab. Um, I already put down your email, but one more time, you want to put down your, uh, say your email for anyone who may be watching this at a later time. Yes, it's kristen.lawler at mountstvincent.edu. And that's a big mouthful and everybody spells Kristen wrong. So what you want to do is go onto the website, find the sociology department. You'll see my name and just, there's an email you can like click on. So just go ahead and do it that way. But I'm Kristen Lawler. I'm the chair of the sociology department and I'm happy to hear from any of you anytime. And I wish you all the best. Take care of yourselves, take care of one another. That's the other most important thing that we can do is take care of one another through this period of time. We're gonna get through this and I wish you all the best. Thank you, Dr. Lawler. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Andrew. Bye, bye everybody.